to talk, uh, Roger, if you might get uh, you to talk us through your journey, the light year journey yeah. um, as to why Northern Ireland. Yeah, so um, I suppose I'll, I'll step back before I said we uh, we started a company in Sydney, which was called Invitbox in 2011. And that was right at the start. We were an, an app in the ecosystem around zero MIOB and stuff like that. And uh, we were successful. We were very lucky. We, we got an exit. But we did realize that being in Australia was actually very difficult if you're playing on the world stage, time zones and all of the stuff that we um, we normally experience. So um, when it came second time around, uh, we knew we needed to have at least a second center somewhere in Europe or North America. Um, but we assumed that we would basically do it in Sydney again and basically then set up a secondary office in, in one of those countries. But we were very fortunate. We were out one evening and uh, we were, it, I think Peter yourself were there and uh, Barry was there and we were just about to start working out where we were going to put this and Invest Northern Ireland were saying, well, we're about to put a sort of an office over in uh, in Sydney. What about Northern Ireland? And we thought, right, well, this is, this is perfect timing means we don't have to pick up a phone, find out who to talk to. And it was within a week, really, that we made our mind up. Yeah, OK, Northern Ireland it was where we were going to go. Um, it was a very, very easy decision, both both from the point of view of, I'll, I'll explain Northern Ireland in a second and Belfast, but how Invest Northern Ireland actually made it. It was There was no let's negotiate. It was like, guys, this is what we can do for you. This is the support you have. And they just laid it out. We were like, well, this is what we want. For the people in Sydney talking about Northern Ireland, it sounds like this great grand place, but I'll put it into perspective for you. Driving from Bondi to Parramatta is like driving from one side of Northern Ireland to the other, right? It is very, very tight. So even though we talk about two cities, Belfast and Londonderry, it's an hour's travel time on a motorway between them. You're two hours from Dublin. In the middle of Belfast is Belfast City Airport and our office, the Catalyst office is right beside that. So you can literally leave your office and within 10 minutes be at the airport and within 20 minutes be on a flight to London, which takes an hour and 15. So Northern Ireland is an island, get it, but it's actually a really, really tight community. And it's a, it's a very, very clever community. I was one of the stupid ones that got out, all the clever ones stayed. Um, but it's, um, it, it just made sense to us. You know, We can operate a 24 hour service between our Belfast office and our Sydney office. So when basically Sydney goes to sleep, Belfast comes online. So between those two offices, it makes sense for us to run a, a sort of a global uh, tech company from that. How, how many people are you employing now out of Catalyst? In, in, um, we have, uh, well, yes, we've got, I think, 16, 17 there at the moment. Um, again, to put it into perspective, we just yesterday moved into a new office within Catalyst. Uh, it's a 5,000 square foot, five. 500 square meter office that can take a staff of up to, I think, 45 or 50 comfortably. Uh, and to put it into perspective, it's the price of a 150 square meter office in Surrey Hills. You know, it's, it's crazy good value right in the city center, unlimited parking, great transport hubs. And the team at Catalyst are absolutely unbelievable in terms of, you know, the, the catering there is superb catering. Um, so there's just a lot of positive. If you're if you've got your wish list, it, it, there's a lot of really boxes to tick really easily. What about the salaries? Compared to uh, well, there of course we would always say they're always too expensive. Uh, Northern Ireland people don't need much, um, but um, I think if you say half price, you know it's probably less than that, to be honest. But uh, you know if, when we were recruiting a developer in Sydney, honestly, it's twice the price of the same developer in Northern Ireland. And I'll be honest, from a developer sense, we find in Sydney, developers are very good at building a wall, right? It's like, yeah, it's like, here's a wall, it's lovely, it's all square, and they can do that really well. But if there's a little bit of uneven ground, or you ask them to put, you know, a little sort of feature in the wall or think on their feet, it's a little bit difficult. The Northern Ireland tech community, actually, the guys seem to just be able to think on their feet a little bit more, think outside the box. I think it's a lot to do with the education system. So you're saying, you know, a three to five year developer with Ruby, Northern Ireland versus Sydney, uh, it's half the price. And I actually think you're probably getting a little bit more 
from that person. Depends if, if you're going to be a city bank or someone like that, you maybe just want someone who's going to build walls. That that's maybe all you do. But you know, if you're a tech startup, you know, you've you've got to be able to uh, collaborate across other members of your team, and we all wear different hats. And we find that a really uh, easy proposition to put to the uh, sort of the sector in Northern Ireland when you're recruiting. Great. I mean, we we know from Sydney, Australia, I'm sure, also from New Zealand. You can hire locally, you can, but uh, often you're doing offshore or in the Philippines. You have India. to pay for it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, probably a lot of people hadn't considered Northern Ireland. I did. I wouldn't yeah. have considered that without knowing this, what I know now. Well, I'm certainly going to put in a plug for Invest in I here. Um, uh, um, Lightyear was one of our clients. We look at each of the clients very critically, what they're bringing to Northern Ireland in terms of the jobs, also in terms of the R&D. Um, and in Lightyear's case, uh, we offered an in, uh, investment incentive of £118,000, which is almost $200,000. But back then, I think, Roger, there was about eight or nine jobs. And I'm, I'm really pleased to hear you've almost uh, doubled in size uh, in the last two years. Yeah, I mean, that initial offer of support was for, I think, for us to bring or create eight to ten jobs. And then we, we did that and invest Northern Ireland, right? Well, boys, do you want to go again? You know, very quickly <laughs> over a course of, you know, a, a, a very quick, you know, meeting, another package was put to support us as we did that. And uh, especially during, oh, lost, a, lost an earpiece, during COVID times, I'll be honest, um, Invest Northern Ireland were brilliant in terms of going, right, guys, what do we need to do to help you here? Um, so, yeah, it was, um, it was a pretty, it was a good deal first time round. And it's not just a case that give you a deal first time round and we forget about you. Um, you know, there's been there to support us uh, through this last two years. Yeah, and I'm just going to add something as well. Uh, Invest Northern Ireland, we're quite unique that when an international company comes to Northern Ireland, employs people in Northern Ireland, we treat them exactly the same as we would treat a Northern Ireland company. So, for example, if you then went on a trade delegation to, I don't know, Canada or looking to do more R&D, um, you're entitled to that. And I know our uh, equivalent, for example, in the Republic of Ireland, they don't offer that. That's only for Irish companies. That's because you set up a company in Northern Ireland so now. You're a Northern Irish company. That's that's how we treat them as Even one, if it's one a subsidiary of an Australian or New Zealand, one, New Zealand one, one of our own, exactly. Yeah. 